In 1989, the 747-400, a legendary aircraft, entered service, and it was a massive success, with 18 airlines placing orders for it even before rollout, and an eventual total of a massive 694 units sold, this being the most of any 747 variant in history. However, Boeing had even bigger plans, no pun intended, for its flagship airliner. And in the early 90s, they began dreaming up an even better 747 known as the 747-500. Before we get into explaining this Dash 500, do be sure to subscribe to Globetrotting. As we continue to grow the channel, we'd love to see your support for future analysis coverage. The earliest concepts of the 747-500 can be traced back to even before the 747-400 was launched. Boeing had already seen the success of the previous aircraft variants and planned to push its limits in several unconventional and innovative ways. Perhaps the most outlandish of these experimental changes was Boeing's attempt at a 747 variant with turboprop engines instead of conventional jet airliner turbofans. This was a proposal made contemporarily with another Boeing project called the 7J7, a small short-haul narrowbody airliner similar to the 717 and 727. Only with bizarre counter-rotating turboprop engines, it would make the plane laser-focused on maximum fuel efficiency. The 7 in 7J7 stood for Japan, where the concept of the airliner was predicted to be the most popular. Boeing believed these new turboprops could be the future of air travel and started dreaming bigger than just the humble 7J7. Therefore, early concepts of the proposed next generation of the 747 included four turboprops in place of conventional jet engines, and the projected numbers were impressive. Boeing believed the 747-500 would have a range of up to 8,700 nautical miles, 1,000 more than the 747 400, a range that definitely rivals even modern day's most capable airliners. Such an extensive range would allow it to connect the world's most distant cities, like New York and Singapore, or London to Sydney in a single trip, all with excellent fuel efficiency thanks to its new engines. Because of this capability, the 747-500 gained much interest from Singapore Airlines and Qantas, both airlines historically known for wanting to push the limits of non-stop commercial flights. And today, in 2022, that only continues, with Qantas, of course, eyeing up the launch of Project Sunrise with the A350-1000, Project Sunrise being the ambition to fly non-stop from Sydney to New York and Sydney to London, among a host of other destinations, connecting the globe better, whereas over at Singapore Airlines, we already see them stretching their legs with some of the world's longest flights, notably from New York through to Singapore without a single stop. However, while Boeing seemed to think that the experimental turboprops held great promise, there were several good reasons to be skeptical of their viability. The most glaring issue with the engines is simply that they were so new and unusual. That is to say, their use of an airliner that was only designed to fly with traditional turbofan jets was highly experimental and involved many unknown variables. Research and development on how to maximize the fuel efficiency of these engines and possible additional modifications of existing airframes to accommodate them would make the project quite a costly endeavour, considering the risks involved. This is, of course, in addition to a whole number of other logistical issues that may have arisen from the new engines, such as maintenance and or the potential to acquire spare parts, which may have been pretty difficult to find. The fuel efficiency aspect of the engines also began to seem less enticing to potential customers as oil prices stabilized in the late 80s and early 90s. And to add to all of this, the engines were just plain loud, especially when at the time, new advancements were trying to move airliners away from the excessive noise pollution. In the end, Boeing scrapped the idea of the turboprop 747-500. However, despite the issues with the engines, the concept of a stretched 747-400 still seemed to hold some promise. Therefore, Boeing went ahead with the idea only with the conventional turbofans like the 747-400. 
This new 747-500 was dubbed to be the 747-500X and would feature a lengthened 250-foot or 76.2-metre fuselage with a capacity of a whopping 462 passengers. Its wings would be based on the 777s as opposed to the 747-400s, which meant an absence of winglets. And even without the turboprops, it would still boast a range of 8,700 nautical miles. However, the new features still do not attract significant enough attention to make the 747-500 program actually economically viable. Of course, when an aircraft manufacturer is either looking to launch an aircraft or in the final stages of launching a said aircraft, they need to ensure that the market demand is high enough to make, of course, the program economically viable. If an aircraft manufacturer, say Boeing, went ahead with launching a 747-500 with very little interest, they would likely make losses. And as a business, that is something you're always going to be actively trying to avoid, especially in a case where aviation is such an important market and you really can either go big or go home. The only airlines that did show genuine interest in the Dash 500X were the customers mentioned above, and they are the ones being Qantas and Singapore Airlines, who were generally interested in the ultra-long-haul flight capabilities that the aircraft was poised to be able to do. Of course, airlines, though, interested in these long-haul flights were far and few between at the time. Most airlines could not make such a colossal plane profitable, and opted for the existing 747-400 instead. Even so, a more substantial change was beginning in the industry. Twin-engined airliners, such as the A300 and Boeing's very own 767, with their new ETOPS certification, could now cross oceans like the four-engined 747. But do you want to know the catch? It was at a fraction of the cost. This, of course, then being a telltale sign at the beginning of the decline of the four-engined era. It seemed as though the 747-400's success was really the last hurrah of the super jumbo age, and planes of its kind would no longer define commercial air travel. Of course, nowadays, as we sit in 2022, the 1980s and 1990s were some time ago, but it's been very clear to see where industry trends have moved, and just how twin-engined aircraft, like Boeing 787, the Airbus A350, and even the 777, have really taken the world by storm over your A380s and 7478s. And to generally top it all off and give this video a well-rounded end, the world economy again took a plunge in the late 90s and airlines lost interest in a concept aircraft without promising economics. Now, what are your thoughts? In a day and age now, do you think it would have been cool to see such a plane fly? And if Boeing had gone through with launching it, which airline do you think should have ordered it, aside from Qantas and Singapore Airlines? You can drop your hypothetical answers down below in the comments. Thank you very much for tuning into this video here on Globetrotting. We really appreciate the support. Do take care, and we will see you next time.